it's great you definitely don't want to miss it but tonight we have a great guest it's somebody that um, if you're familiar with Star Trek fan films you might be familiar with him um, otherwise you should be familiar with him um, he's a very good friend of mine his name is Carlos Pedraza right now he's the editor-in-chief of a website called Axe Monitor this website it, it's it's very specific in terms of the news that it's covering because it's specifically covering the ins and outs of a fan film project known or at least previously known as Star Trek Axanar um, and and this is such a it's a complex thing because why do we need a whole independent news outlet talking about a fan film well let me tell you something this isn't just any old fan film So what's up with this whole Axonaut thing? Shut up for a minute and I'll tell you. There was once a time when anyone who liked Star Trek enough could make their own Star Trek. Whether it was just some online video, short, a movie, or even an entire television series, it was open season on Star Trek. And you could raise as much money and bring in as many famous Star Trek people as you could find phone numbers for. And no big Macha studio in Hollywood would give you grief over it. Okay. One day, a man in California said he could make the best Star Trek film of all time. That he could make it even better than Paramount or CBS could imagine. He never produced anything before, but he had friends in high places at Star Trek conventions, and they were going to help him out. He started asking for money. A lot of it. Over a million bucks. The money kept pouring in. This guy, instead of making the greatest Star Trek film of all time, decided to create his own studio instead. Really? He found an expensive warehouse space in L.A. and just started dumping all his money into rent while still proclaiming he would make the best Star Trek film of all time. But days turned into weeks, weeks into months, months into almost a couple years, and there was no movie. There were some partially built sets, lots of merchandise, Klingon coffee? Wait. Klingon coffee, what the hell? But still no movie. Finally, CBS and Paramount, which owned the rights to Star Trek, decided like enough was enough and sued this man in his acts in our production for copyright infringement. Usually that's enough to get even the most bold fan to run away, but not this guy. He found some lawyers who would represent him for free and they spent the next year fighting in court phases on snooze. That is until a judge said Axanar would have to open up its financial books. Then, as if magically beaming in and out of nowhere, both sides agreed to settle. The Axanar guy would strictly follow new guidelines put out for Star Trek fan films everywhere, and the actual owners of Star Trek promised they'd stop all the suing business. The man took off to Atlanta, promising to turn his million-dollar-plus film into two small episodes. Yet many years later, bupkis. Will we ever see this Axanar thing? Even if we did, could the adventure on screen ever compete with the drama off screen? I don't think so. <laughs> 